Welcome back to Working on Exploring. We've been doing some work on our hydronic heating system. In the first couple of videos, you've seen us plan it and then install it. And now we're going to test it and we're going to troubleshoot and correct the, the problems that we encounter. Hopefully, you'll in, take away some valuable lessons that I learned in trying to do all of this. First one was pressurizing the water loop and finding leaks, and Steve got those all fixed as of this morning? No, yeah. yesterday, I think. Somewhere between here and here or here it leaks. It drips steadily off the bottom here. So this setting here straight. seals with a with a washer theoretically. Well this washer obviously is compromised. But it had two of them in there and it's this is supposed to be this is the right thread, it's a British thread, but it's supposed to seal with the plastic pipe that goes into it. So you can see here's the bottom fitting I made. This fitting has no problem sealing. This is just a drain fitting, so I might just make one. I wouldn't make this. This is made out of plastic because this is a cold water slide. And then the second one was firing up the diesel heater and making sure that the coolant loops did not leak. And of course they did. So now those are all fixed. Mode one is to heat the water tank with engine heat. And this is something we didn't test at home because I didn't want to run the engine long enough and hard enough to make it heat up. It just doesn't heat up very much when it's idling. So we waited till we hit the road, till we did this test. So after an hour of driving, we stopped at a rest stop and checked all the rest of the load and, and the temperature. And the temperature was set at 78 centigrade, which is great because it was supposed to heat to 80 and then shut off. And there was a light on the, on the control indicating that it had reached 80 and had shut off and so great everything worked exactly as I expected it to. I just decided at that point in time well I'm just going to shut the system off because we're going to keep driving so I shut the system off and two hours later when I stopped and looked at the temperature the temperature had gone up to 109 degrees and it's like holy crap that's that's dangerous because 109 degree water is boiling and so the only thing keeping it from boiling actively is the fact that the pressure that keeps on the water. I had to scratch my head and say what happened and it didn't take me very long to figure out that a one of the wires that controls the, the valve to the tank, it has a wire that closes it and a wire that opens it. And the wire that closes it had fallen off the terminal block, so it never got closed and water had heated it. So once I fixed that, everything was done and fixed. Call that completely successful. And the first test is going to be right here. This will be the state we're in, a coolant water heater. So we're going to run the, the coolant through and heat some water. So we press and hold. So we're starting out with the uh, coolant heater it just jumped to 23 24 it's starting to fire up this is what we're doing we're heating the water heat which is 29.4 centigrade and then down here at the bottom we have in and out uh, supply temperatures so this hydronic or the, the, the hydronic supply should be similar to the hydronic coolant and now you're seeing now as the coolant is circulated we're going to see some temperature uh, equilibration while the coolant heater is trying to start up. Cheryl has to relearn all the new monitors. Yeah, I don't even think I learned Chinese. the first set. There's, there's a, a couple of... We've got some Chinese to figure out. <laughs> Nothing in the wet bay is currently leaking, so it's a good sign. All the new fittings are holding. Just that pipe right there is our whistling friend that we need. It's getting warmer. It's sticky stuff. We didn't do a time check, but right now it's 221, so it's been maybe two minutes. Right. So at 219 is when this started. So we're going to verify how fast it takes to get up to about 40 degrees. Want to check and see how hot our bathroom water is? Five minutes in, 36.8, 28, it's been less than 10 minutes running, and we have some pretty hot water in the new water tank. 
operation of the water heat with the coolant heater, and we did test it some while we were at home. We've been testing it some more as we've gained a better understanding of the, of the control on the coolant heater. We've learned that a warm-up in order to get ignited in about another minute to begin producing usable heat. So heating of water doesn't occur until about two minutes after the coolant heater has been started. But the coolant heater runs at high speed as soon as it's, it's started up and it ramps up the coolant temperature pretty rapidly. Any heat that's generated in the coolant heater is rapidly carried in the calorifier. And we've found that we get the usable hot water. What's, what's usable? How hot are we heating? So the engine will heat it to um, 80 degrees centigrade, which is 176 Fahrenheit. That's, that's pretty hot. I don't want to heat that hot with my coolant heater because I've probably expended much more diesel fuel than I really need and made a lot more hot water than I'm ever going to use. So what I'd really like to do is I'd like to terminate my hot water heating somewhere around 60 centigrade. Um, 60 centigrade is about 140 degrees and that's more than hot enough, especially with 5.28 gallons. I've got all the hot water I need. My intention for this is because I don't have a temperature control that I can set to, to shut the coolant heater off. I'm going to have to do it manually. So my intention will be we'll have a timer just as soon as you start the coolant heater up, you set a timer for 10 minutes. And when it goes off at 10 minutes, you look over at the temperature of the water tank and you decide if that's hot enough, just shut the coolant heater down manually. And that's what our, our process will be. Coolant heating the hot water to cool the heating the cabin. Okay. They're already. So as we go on to the hydronic cabin heat, my intention for hydronic cabin heat is that I have three different radiators in the cabin. I have a, a large double radiator under the kitchen cabinet. That's the kitchen cabinet. This is where the new heater is and it's on right now. Fairly quiet, you're right. Plus coolant tubing running through the floor, copper radiator in the shower, and I also have a small fan forced radiator in the bunk. My intention would be to have all these valves open so whenever the coolant system fired up that coolant would flow through all of them and would project heat from each of them, and it does. It works as expected. I did have one shortcoming problem after I first tested it and it worked fine. I think what happened was is I ended up with an air bubble in the system and the next time I fired it up, only the floor portion of it worked and, and neither the shower nor the bunk portion worked. And so I discovered that I was short about a half a gallon of coolant in the system. So after topping that half gallon off, again, it worked fine. The way that I want this system to work is I want to be able to fire up the coolant heater and the coolant heater should provide heat to the cabin and then the coolant heater should stay running and throttle down in order to prevent itself from overheating and shutting off. It doesn't do exactly that. It does throttle down when the coolant temperature gets to 80 centigrade and it shuts off when it gets to 90 centigrade because it actually still heats faster than I can radiate into my cabin or whether I need to radiate into my cabin. It does shut down but it has an automatic restart function. So. One of the nice things about it, I think, I think I'm learning to enjoy it, that it will heat up to 80 and throttle down to 90 and shut off at 90. But when it shuts off at 90, the coolant pump continues to circulate coolant. My radiators in the cabin continue to, to blow heat and to remove heat from this coolant. And the coolant heater sits and monitors the coolant temperature. And when that coolant temperature drops to 50 centigrade, then the coolant heater fires back up again. Again, it climbs back up to through 80 to 90 and shuts off again. And it takes about 25 or 30 minutes before it, the first shutoff. And then it takes probably another 10 minutes when it cools down and loses heat into the cabin environment before it starts up again. So this is a couple times an hour scenario, but I think it does exactly what I need it to do. I have thermal switches on both the radiators. It works so that I can fire up the coolant heater and I can watch the heat climb on the, on the monitoring panel. When that temperature gets to about 43 or 44 degrees, the, the 40 centigrade thermal switches on my, my radiators switch on and the fans switch on and they run. And even when the coolant heater shuts off, they continue to run. It works exactly as I'd planned. So we move this into the last coolant loop, which is back to the engine. So as the coolant heats up, it's a way to preheat the engine. So if we're doing any winter camping outside, it's a great way to uh, get your engine started up and not have the cold start problem. He's going underneath the engine to look for leaks. Hopefully it will be like this. The engine is definitely warming up. Um, I can feel it from below. Yeah, we got about, again, seven degrees. So I think we're done. 
almost a well. I'm going to say it's a success until I think you verify it's a, it's your, a success. your one drip is a, a couple. Is a I think drip or the not drips drip. below are leaking down. So one of the things I think I have to do is I have to put an expansion tank in there because what one of the things that happens when we heat hot water, temperature pressure overload goes off on pressure because I don't have an ex expansion tank in the system on the hot water side. Of the Some overall comments. I think the lack of an effective manual for the controller was very frustrating initially. I, I could start it, I could stop it, but I really couldn't do anything else. I could not uh, have control over the operation of the device, which was very frustrating. I have found several different errors in my system. I think I've discovered a couple of different wiring errors. I had some, some miswiring and a, and a one wire that had fallen off. In general, things worked the way I expected them to work once I had them connected the, the way that I intended to connect them. But of course, everybody makes errors and I certainly make my share. I think that the way that we intend to use the hydronic heating system for the cabin is that we will largely rely on our diesel air heater when it's temperate, when it's above freezing. And the, the, the coolant heater will really come into play uh, as cabin heat when it's below freezing, where the cabin, where the coolant can also be used to heat the external bays and, and those types of things that need some heating. I have a fairly extensive electrical heating system in all my uh, exterior compartments, but I'd really prefer to use diesel-fired coolant rather than electricity. And so I have uh, the electricity is going to be my backup and the coolant is going to be my primary. Much of that system is still yet to be installed and none of it is, of course, at an operating state to ready to be tested. We do happen to be in Wyoming where in the last couple of nights the temperature has been in the 20s. A couple of days ago it snowed several inches on us, so we've definitely seen some, some chilly weather and some freezing weather where it's a good opportunity to be testing a heater. I just forgot to turn it off. And this is all we got to say about that? Yeah. Did you figure it out? Yeah, yeah just press and hold. Press and hold. That's the only buttons we know how they work. Yeah, our wonderful Chinese manual for this thing is absolutely the worst Probably piece of documentation I've ever seen. That's okay, your picture's on. Yeah. <laughs>